Well, praise the Lord, everyone. I'm five minutes late. I've been back here talking and, and got a late start. Uh, we want to go ahead and uh, and uh, have a word of prayer before we do. We'll give you an update on uh, Brother Martin. Uh, I talked to uh, Debbie a while ago, and she already she did put a post on Facebook. So I don't know if some of you may have seen it, but he had a good day today. He they got the trach, uh the trach, the uh, ventilator. ventilator. They took the vent out uh, yesterday morning and uh, we went and seen him yesterday and he was sitting up in bed laughing and giggling and, and uh, he, he was still pretty sick but his blood count's low where well, they put the <coughs> line in him down here it uh, it ruptured and so he's had a lot of blood loss and uh, so they gave him uh, blood today uh, to get his blood count back up but they told him if things keep improving uh, the way they are, they'll probably get him out of ICU tomorrow or the next day. They're talking about they hadn't let him get up yet, so that'll tell the tale. Uh, but uh, anyway, he's got a he's got a, a, a blockage in an artery on his heart, and they said that they're gonna they're gonna start doing some kind of procedure on him with the dye, and they got to start that this coming week, <coughs> trying to see if they're going to be able to unblock this artery without having to go in there because they said they don't want to do surgery on it because it's going to be so dangerous because of the, what it is, one of the bypasses is blocked that they put in. So they said it was going to be a, uh, it's not good that, uh, that that's, and that may be what caused this situation. Mm -hmm. They don't know that now, but uh, anyway, that's what the cardiology report said. And so uh, they're going to start working this week on uh, trying to take care of that. So Debbie's still up there, and uh, he's uh, he's in good spirits. Lily had a birthday today, and all the kids wound up up there and, and uh, with them and took pictures and all that good stuff. So uh, he, he, he's in good spirits, so praise the Lord for that. But he's still a very sick man. And uh, Brother James is, uh, is having a lot of problems with his stomach right now. Uh, you know, he's had issues for the last couple of years. He went to the VA uh, a couple of weeks ago and, and saw a substitute doctor and she took him off his medication and he'd been sick as a dog ever since. Mm -hmm. And he went back down there, uh, what day was that, day before yesterday? Monday. He went down there Monday and uh, they gave him morphine and sent him back home. Mm -hmm. So he's home uh, with morphine and they, they're shipping him some antibiotics that he should have now. But they're going to send him back to Willis Knight to the gastrologist there that he likes and hopefully they'll turn him over to the gastrologist so that man can, because he's already told James I can help you if they'll let me. But he has to have that cleared through the VA and so far they haven't been willing to, to do that. They'll let him see him one time and then they won't, they won't let him go anymore. So. Hopefully this time they're going to turn him over to this doctor so he can fix his stomach. So y'all be in prayer for uh, James and Janice. And, and Janice has got a brother and his sister both in Rosehaven nursing home now. So her plate's already pretty full. And uh, so they, they need our prayers. Is there anyone else that uh, we need to remember? Yes, sir. Uh, brother, a uh, friend of mine's sister that I told y'all was so sick with all she got better and had her good days and, and then just completely collapsed. And she <coughs> told me this morning that the doctor came in there and shook his head at her, not at the chief passed out and morphine or something, but he shook his head at her. And, and my friend said, does that mean what I think it does? And he said, yes, <coughs> probably tonight or tomorrow. So they, they had been checking her and her feet and hands are starting to get cold. No no blood circulation and everything just shutting down. Yeah. So bless her heart. She, she's prayed a lot and says she's saved and I that's all you can do. If somebody right. says they are, I'll go with it. Absolutely. But she's prayed and asked the good Lord to take her and just come on with it. So yeah. that's been my prayer and I think Thinking about why uh, people involved, and my friend is suffering through it with her sister dying, and her mother has been down here visiting, and she's suffering through it. I said, God's trying to talk to y'all. Neither one lives in church. I said, God's trying to talk to y'all about this being prolonged like this. 
that maybe y'all will see that you need to get right with the Lord in case this happens to you tomorrow. And uh, the bad part is that <coughs> doctors said probably 24, 48 hours is all she had left. I said Terry Pierce, I put on a prayer list. Still hoping, but doctor goes shaking his head because there ain't no hope for him. Not up to him, though, is it? <laughs> no, it's not Exactly. Up. Anyway. Yes, Sherry. She just had a lot of trouble with stomach. Can't breathe and stuff. Okay. She's pretty right. pretty. Miss Alcee Griffith. Pardon? Miss Alcee. Miss Alcee. Yeah. Keep her on the prayer list. She's, she's not doing well at all. Okay. <laughs> she's got a severe cold. She can't breathe. She's coughing her head off. She's, to me, she's kind of incoherent. At times, and then, then she'll snap out of it for a few minutes. Y'all keep her in prayer. Okay. Anyone else? What about your brother? My brother goes back to MD Anderson Monday, and uh, they, they, they're going to go ahead and do the biopsy on his upper left lung that they were afraid to do up here in Texas County. He wouldn't let them do it in Texas County. He's going to let these people do it. They found an abscess in his right lung. It's, uh, and they, they, they didn't say it was was or was not malignant, but I assume it was not, or I figured they'd have told him that. So they've got a, another spot in his left lung <coughs> that they couldn't see with the test of the bronch that they were doing. They went down in his bronchial tubes and examined his lungs from up here. Those lungs are so fragile. And the spot on his left lung is covered by bullets or air, air bubbles inside his lungs. Their skin like a balloon and so they, they're going to have to go through those to see what that <coughs> other spot is that's growing. It may be another abscess they don't know. So anyway, so Monday he's going to be going, he just got back home and he's going to have to go back again. So hopefully he'll get to stay down there until they figure all this out this time. And he, and he went to work. He took off Monday and went back to work too. He, 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 he's stubborn than I am, I'm telling you. <laughs> Wait a minute now. <laughs> well, I feel the same as Brother Warning. He fell out of a port twain Monday. At Amber picked him up and took him to the camp. What? And it just bruised him pretty bad. But while they was there, they found out he. It either had one stroke or two strokes. Oh my goodness. So it, that's just the way the Lord works on him. Wow, yeah. So, okay. I don't know what it, he may have to go back to the doctor. I don't know what to say. He's wow. In, he's in Oklahoma City now, so whoever thinks it. <laughs> not a doctor, not a baseball guy. He's tough as an old boot anyway. Uh, we need to remember uh, Mike, Mike uh, he calls him Wormy, but his name is Michael. And they remember him in our prayers. Uh, Brother Jim Bob said you lead some prayer, please. Good Lord, once again, come before you, thanking you for the opportunity to get together tonight to study your word. Lord, just ask you to be with us as we embark upon this study. Just open our hearts to receive what you would have for us. Lord, just these that have been mentioned standing in each prayer. Lord, we just ask that your will be done in each one of their lives. You know their needs way better than we do. Lord, we would call for healing. But Lord, we know that everything that is done will be your work. Lord, we just ask you to be with, with the families of the ones that are ill. Give them, give them a peace. Lord, just be with the doctors and the nurses and the technicians. All that, that have anything to do with the medical field, Lord, just give them the knowledge and the skills to do what needs to be done. Lord, just ask you to be with us as we go into this study, and then later as we leave from here, just as for traveling grace as we go back to our homes. Ask these things in thy name. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to be talking tonight about hunting a wife. So you young people listen up, okay? <laughs> we're going to be talking about hunting a wife and uh, and it's, a, it's going to be kind of a very interesting story. And it's in chapter 24 of Genesis, if you'll turn there. 
and uh, we're going to, it's kind of lengthy, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, probably get through with this chapter, but it, it is long. It's got a lot of, a lot of uh, spiritual information in here, things that we need to take heed to, and processes and ways to do things, and, and, and uh, it, it's really a good story. So the search of a wife, uh, for a wife for Isaac, is, is what we're going to be talking about tonight. Would somebody read for me first the first nine verses, please? So we know that Sarah died at 127 years old. When Sarah died, how old was Isaac? Some of you mathematicians tell me. He's 37 years old when Sarah died. So we don't know how much time has elapsed between the time Sarah has died and, and this time. Uh, but he, we do know that uh, Isaac is at least 37 years old. By our standards, <laughs> you know, he, he's going to be a... Uh, an old bachelor if he don't do something soon. And, but uh, by their standards, it's not uh, not quite that uh, big a deal uh, because, it, you know, we've talked about this before. Um, back in that time, they didn't really consider a, a, a guy, a man, to live around 30 years old anyway. And uh, so that's why Christ came to uh, and, and started his ministry at the age of 30. He had no respectability until that time. And so uh, this is this is what's going on here. And and who does Abraham sin? Because Abraham's not able to go pick a, a wife for his son. Who does he sin? Sir, sir, he, he he sends his eldest servant in his house. Now this man is probably uh, a pretty good age too. Now this man was probably also born in his house. And remember, uh, in the prior chapters, the Lord when he questioned God about. 
having an heir or having a son from his own loins. Remember what he said? He, he named a, a servant that he had that was born in his house that he trusted and he wanted to, he asked God, is this servant going to be my heir? Remember that uh, from the scriptures in the past? So the Bible don't name the servant here so we don't know if it's the same person or not. But I would think it would be. I mean, I had no way to prove it. Uh, but I would think that he's probably talking about this same man because this man was entrusted with all of Abraham's fortune, with all of his cattle, with all of his other servants. This man just handled everything for Abraham, and he was a very, very trusted man. And so he, 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 he they have a strange custom. They didn't shake hands. What did they do? Shake hands. <laughs> now that would be kind of awkward, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Now, now Troy, we just got Troy used to hugging. <laughs> and can you imagine if our custom was, okay, sit there, Troy, we're fixing to make this pack. Let me put my hand up on your thigh and hang on this a minute. It'd be kind of uncomfortable, but in that day and time, it's yeah, just a little, a little humor from the word. Uh, so it, because these customs seem so strange to us, but in that day, it meant something, okay? And so he put this, his hand, he told him, he said, put your hand under my thigh and I want you to swear by the Lord. Now the Bible tells us, we saw that in a previous, uh, in another chapter where the Lord swore by himself, okay? Now later, later on, it's going to be, uh, the Lord's going to tell us we don't need to swear by him, okay? And, and take oaths that way. And so uh, he, he, he said, I want you to swear to me uh, before the God of heaven and the God of earth. You think this servant believed in God? You think he believed in the God of Abraham? I think we're going to find out in a minute just how much we, he did believe in God. You know, you, it, it's hard to, uh, to be in the, the company every day of a godly person without it rubbing off on you a little bit. Amen? That's why it's imperative, y'all, for us to be godly in front of people. It's imperative that we be godly before our children. Let me tell you what. If anybody knows a man or a woman, husband or wife, mama or daddy, if anybody knows how they really are, it's the kids. Amen? But why? Because they're in the house with them every day. They, they, they don't see the, the show that we put on when we're not in home. They, don't, they, they hear the words. They see the arguments. They see the disagreements. They see the, the problems. They see those things. So when you, when you see children who, who love the Lord, who follow God, you know that probably they have encountered godly people. And, and it might not always be a parent. It may be a grandparent or someone, or, or even a, a, a friend, an uncle, an aunt, or someone who, you know, in my childhood, uh, my mom and dad didn't go to church until I was almost grown. I was a, matter of fact, I was already out of high school <clears throat> when they started going, and I thank God they did. And, uh, but uh, I wasn't, mama would go to church some, daddy didn't. And she had to drag us to church, and with the, I told y'all about church we went to, it was all women. There were men in it. And, uh, and well, I'd squirm, I'd get, I hated church because it got beat up all the time. Every time I went to church, I got whipped. I got pinched or got whipped because I was mean. And that's why when, when I came here and all these little kids wanted to do things, and I'd see big pants running them, they'd chase them. Down. When I first came here to preach, I'd see them chase them down the walls. And, and, and I finally told him one day, I said, leave those kids alone. And, uh, and uh, if y'all remember, if you can remember that back that far and you were here, some of you weren't here, Lucas and some of the other kids used to come up here with little cars and trucks and sit at the altar and play while I preached. You know what? I, I, did, I told them, leave them alone. Let them do that. And some people told me, said, well, that's so ir uh, it, it, It's not showing any reverence to God. And I said, they're children. And, and I don't want them to hate to come to the house of God. And you know what? We let them do that for a few weeks and you don't see them up here anymore, do you? You know what you see them up here doing now? Praying. Praying. Why? Because they're not afraid to come to the altar. 
And will you agree with that technique or not? It's something the Lord showed me that I needed to let happen here. And I did. And I'm glad that I did. And I'm glad for that because they don't mind coming up here. They come up here and pray. And, and I love to see that in our children. I, would, I want all of our children, I want our teenagers, I want everybody to feel comfortable coming to the altar. This is Daddy's house. If you feel comfortable in your house, you ought to feel comfortable in his house of all places. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so uh, that, that's what, uh, how did I get off on that? But anyhow, uh, he, he told him, he said, I want you to swear you're going to give me a wife. Uh, 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 and he said, I do not. Now, Abraham didn't know how long he was going to live. He knew he was an old man. Later on, we're going to find out he wasn't there as old as he thought he was. But anyway, he, he said, I don't, he, uh, you know, in case something happens to me, don't let him take a wife of the Canaanites. So he, he gave him he gave him two orders. What is the other one? Don't let him take a wife of the Canaanites. What is the other order he asked the servant not to let happen? Don't, care. Don't, care. Don't let Isaac go back to where I'm from, to where my relative went. Why do y'all think he made that request? Like to separate from from him, yeah. Earlier, the 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 promise that God, the covenant God had made, was for Isaac to leave that place, and everywhere you put your foot, I'm gonna give you that the covenant of promise. Yeah. The covenant of promise was going to be handed down to the descendants of Abraham, and Isaac needed to be in this land in order for that covenant promise. To carry on, okay. and, and so that it's very important that we see this. That Abraham's not only looking uh, for a wife suitable for his son, but he's also wanting to make sure that that uh, there's people around to keep Isaac in the location that God wants him in. Okay, I want y'all to think about this. I, I'm glad to have all my kids close to home. I really am. It gets a little burdensome sometimes. But I'd a lot rather have my kids go to home. And Abraham wanted his, his son here in this place of promise that, that so God could carry on this covenant relationship with Isaac and God had already promised uh, Abraham he was going to do that. Okay? And so Abraham knew to do my part. He needs to, he needs to know he needs to be here where he is. Because this is the place that, that God had given me. And so the, the servant began to question him. He said, well, wait a minute. He said, now what if I go down? Because this servant ain't got a clue where this servant was probably born in Abraham's, uh, with Abraham's people. He didn't know where Abraham had come from. He didn't know all these people. He knew Abraham. He said, now wait a minute. What if this woman won't come back with me? That's a that good, good question, isn't it? And, and that's in verse 5. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land, must I needs bring thy son again into the land which thou had came. So he said, If she won't come to me, come with me, do I need to take your son to her? And that's when Abraham said, No, do not take him back. So now this guy's in kind of a, a predicament. If she won't come, this is the way we think we worry, don't we? We, we conjure up worry. We worry about stuff that hasn't even happened yet, right? Yep. And he said, so he's going through all these scenarios in his own little brain, and he said, well, she won't come, and I can't take it. What in the world am I going to do if this don't work out for me? That's, that's what he's going. And so Abraham said, uh, be, <laughs> beware that thou bring not my son thither again. In other words, don't take him back. And then he went to, to talk in, uh, to, to this man. And what does Abraham tell him I'm going to do for you? In verse 7. What does Abraham tell him I'm going to do for you? What is it? He wants to give, give this man some confidence. So in the, in the last sentence of verse 7, he says, He shall send it. He said, uh, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And then he, he says, And he shall send his angel before you. And you shall take a wife unto my son from thence. He was trying to tell him, don't worry. God's in this. God's got this. The Lord's angel is going to go ahead of you. Everything's going to be ready for you when you show up. That's what he, Abraham told him. Now, if that ain't faith, I don't know what is. Amen? Amen. 
Don't you wish you had that kind of faith? That you could ship your faith ahead and change things in another country? You know what? We do have that kind of faith if we'll use it. We do. If Abraham had it, why can't we? <coughs> Abraham knew what God was doing. And then he said, but if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you're clear from your oath. I, I'm not going to hold it against you. You don't have to worry about this. And so, when, when the, now listen to this. Abraham asked him in verse 2 to swear this way and put your hand under her in verse 1. No, verse 2, put your hand under my thigh. He don't do it till verse 9 when he gets all the air clear. Okay? You need to know sometimes what you're getting into with a person when you're trying to make a deal. Mm -hmm. Has any of you ever tried, made a deal and it turned out not to be exactly what you thought it was? Okay. Now he was, this is the servant and he's making a deal with a man who owns everything. And so it don't matter what the servant thinks after he makes his oath, the man with everything is going to call the shots. And he, so he wants to clear the air, and he does. And so as soon as the, uh, the Abraham tells him this, he said, you're going to be clear from your oath. Only bring not my son. So just whatever you do, don't take my son back back there. And then he slid his hand up under his master's thigh, and he swore this oath. Okay, so this man is set on go. He knows his mission. He, he knows that the angel of the Lord has gone before him. That's important. We all need to know that. When God tells us to do something and sends us to do something, always know He's gone before you if He sent you on this mission. And things are going to be prepared. Okay, let's go ahead and read uh, from verses. Let's, uh, how many? Verse 10 through 14, please. I'll do it. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all of the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. Okay, so so this is this is kind of funny to me too because I was thinking about when uh, when I met Anita. Now, where did we go? Where did you go when you got ready to hunt a girlfriend? <laughs> Think about it. We used to cut donuts around the root beer stand when I, in my day. I don't know what some of you older than I, I, I am did, but I met her at a, root, at a hamburger joint. She was cooked there. I love cooks and love hamburgers still today. But anyway, that's what we did. We went from one hamburger joint to another because the girls worked there. That's where the girls were. And so that's where we went. We'd drive up to the window and we'd give them our best look. And, you know, and what are you doing after you get off work? You know, the routine. Well, it's ironic, it's funny here because where does he go? He don't go to the root beer stand. He don't go to the hamburger joint. Where does he go? He goes to the blooming water trough. <laughs> you think you ain't got made now? He goes to the water trough. He goes out to where the well is. Why? Well, that's where the women were. Because women did all that kind of work back then. They were the ones that had to go get the water. They fetched the water. They carried the water. And evidently, they had some pretty big things they carried it on. And you know, you've seen pictures of them in those foreign lands. They got this stuff on top of their head. I don't know where Rebecca was doing this or not. But this is where he goes. And he's got 10 camels. And I want you to listen to this prayer that he prays. He, because now he's really put it into God's hands. Mm -hmm. he, he wants to know I'm in the right place, I'm in the right 
location and I mean the smack dab in the middle of your wheel. So he prays this prayer and he says, Lord, I'm looking for a damsel. <laughs> And he said, I got all these camels, and I'm just paraphrasing this. But if she comes out and she offers me something to drink, and then she offers to give my camel something to drink, I'm going to know she's the one. Well, you better believe it. We're going to talk about wine. <coughs> You're going to know that she is the one. No ifs, ands, and buts. And so this is the, have you ever prayed that kind of prayer to God? God if you'll do this, I'll do this. Or Lord, would you show me this and if, show me this and this and this so I know it's you. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Have you really? Seriously? You know, Gideon prayed that kind of prayer with the fleece. Mm -hmm. Remember? This is the same thing. Only without the fleece. He wants it to happen. But you know what? He wants it to happen. He wants it to happen now. Mm -hmm. His master is an old, old man and evidently he's afraid that he's going to die before he gets back with this woman because he's done told him what he wanted him to do with his son. He wanted him to take care of Don't let him go back. Don't let him marry the woman of the Canaanites. Like he, I'm not going to be there. No. And so this man felt this urgency. So he prays this prayer and he said, Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for my servant Isaac. And thereby I will know that you have shown kindness not to me, but to my master. Now you notice that. He, his, his whole objective is to be pleasing to Abraham. Yep. Amen? Mm -hmm. He's he wanting to please Abraham. Okay. Uh, somebody read for me. Let's, let's read a bunch this time. Somebody read for me verses 15 through 28. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, behold, Rebekah came out who was born to the thorough son of Milcah, the wife of Nabor, Abraham's brother, with a pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water from thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden, golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter, daughter of Bethuel, the son of Nabor, which, uh, which she bare un, unto Nabor. And she moreover unto him, she said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I, being in the way, the Lord led, led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. Wow. <laughs> I love that uh, verse 15. It, you know how he prayed. He was probably prostrate. He was probably bowed down with his face to the ground, speaking to God. And, and before he got through speaking, you don't think the angel of the Lord went ahead of him and had everything ready when he got there? Now this man's not even sure he's in the right spot. But when he gave this prayer and he looks up, 
here comes this pretty, I know she's pretty, the Bible says she is, young woman. The Bible calls her a virgin. And says she, she comes uh, before he ever gets through talking and, and it describes what she looks like. And he got up, when he saw her, he gets excited. And look at verse 17 what it says. And the servant, he gets up and he runs to her. Now can you see this picture? Here's a man with 10 camels and he's got other servant men with him. These camels are laden down. This young woman who's, a, who's a, a, a very pretty and she's got a jug on her to, to carry water in and when she walks up to the, to the place where they get the water, this man jumps up and comes running at her. Now think about that. That's what happened. But the Bible says he ran to her and he said, and, and the first thing out of his mouth, because when he looks up and sees her, he, you, I know what he's thinking. I can't believe this. <laughs> All right? And he's thinking, my God, look, you are something. Mm -hmm. He's having this wow moment. And it gets him excited and he runs to her. He don't even think about scaring her. Mm -hmm. And he runs to her. And, and so he said, and when he runs to her, he stops and he says, let me have a drink out of your pitcher. That's all he can get out. Now she's already dipped the water evidently. Mm -hmm. And he asked her for a drink. And guess what she does? She said, drink, drink. Takes it down, says, here, drink all you want. While you're drinking, he, she said, uh, I'll, I'll get some water for your camels. Now what did he just pray for? The exact thing she did. Now unless she's got ESP, yeah that's right, not ESPN. I, I got joked about that so much I don't know which is which anymore. <laughs> unless she's got ESP, there's no way she knew other than God put this in her head. Yeah. To be there at this time, at this moment, with this attitude. She's feeling her Cheerios today, I'm telling you. You say, well, how do you know that, Brother Gary? Because this man got 10 camels with him. And she puts down the pitcher and she says, now I'm going to water your camels until they're full. Water one camel is a chore. It's <laughs> <less> 10. <laughs> I, yes, sir. I just want to make that point. That is quite a chore. Yeah. yeah. This, my study Bible says that a thirsty camel can drink about 25 gallons. <laughs> And you're talking 10 camels uh, thirsty. This woman took on a... And she said, I'm going to give them water until they're full. Until they, they, they've had all they want. That's wow. A good, that's a good mayor woman right there. You've yeah. got that right there. You can't, <laughs> man. This guy, this, this servant's thinking, I ain't taking her back to Isaac. I don't want this woman. <laughs> you know, can you imagine what's going on here in his mind? This, this guy, the, the Lord is blowing his socks off. Is what he's doing. The Lord is showing this man, this servant, just who he is. Yeah. If we'll let him, he'll do us all that way. He'll blow your socks off if you trust him and you have this kind of faith. And you'll call on his name and you'll bow down and you'll worship him and he'll just he'll blow your socks off. He will. Amen. And so and she did all of this stuff, and the man, it, it, it's funny. And, and she hasted and emptied her. Now, now my study Bible here, uh, A.D., says that a camel, one camel can drink 30 gallons of water in 15 minutes. Mm. And I got to cipher in this. He had 10 camels. It's say, gallon. 25 gallons. 25 gallons per camel. That's 250 gallons of water. Probably with a gallon pitcher. That's almost 555 gallon drums. Well, four, yeah. and then some. Think about that with a pitcher or whatever she's got. Maybe two well, or three gallons. Well, what gets me, even after she done all of that, worked all pretty, I mean, I'm with several hours, he, he sat back and was looking at her and was wondering, is this the one? Well, in verse 21, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> and the man wondering at her held his peace. Why? He was still like, sure. He, just didn't know. he still wasn't sure. He didn't know where he was. Yeah. 
he, he hadn't identified that because Abraham said, go to my family and get me on. He don't know if he's at the right place or not. He, he don't know if this is, she is part of Abraham's family or not. That's why he helped. That's why it says that. But he prayed. I don't so care. He, did, he still didn't know because she hadn't identified herself to him yet. And so the Bible says that, that, she, that he held his peace and he wondered at what was going on. And then uh, it says after, after the camels were done drinking, so he didn't say anything to her as long as she was giving water to the camels. Yeah. And, but when she got through giving water to the camels, what does he do? Look at what he does. Well, he, he pays her first off. Yeah, he he don't right now. He don't care who she is. If a woman will do this, I'm going to pay her because he's got gold and all this stuff that he's brought to 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 give to the family and to the the bride of Isaac. He still don't know he's talking to the bride of Isaac. And so he gives her a, a an earring. I want you to notice. I don't know what y'all's uh, Bible says. You got stuff. Bible says it's a nose ring. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he gives her a golden ring, an earring. That's why it uses singular, I guess. And then uh, said that uh, that it's a half a shekel weight. And then he gives her two bracelets that are ten shekels. They're big, big golden bracelets. And then he says, "Whose daughter are you?" He, now he, he can't stand it no more. He got to know. And so and so she says, "I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah." which she bared to Nahor. Now remember I told y'all at the end of chapter 22 when Abraham was asked to sacrifice Isaac at the end of that. Remember they gave a genealogy of Nahor and I told y'all that that was done to, to somewhere later on. You, he, the, that, that person or one of those persons were going to appear. Or more, and so here she is because it mentions uh, Rebecca then. And so now here she is that that, uh, that 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 she's fixing to play a role in in uh, in uh, Israel's history, and so she she told him who she was. What does he do now? And now, but look, even after he, she tells him that, she says, "And we got straw and everything for your camels, and and uh, and uh, and enough room in the lodge." In other words, now that I've done this, now you come on down, and bring your camels. We're gonna feed them, and we're gonna put you up. Now, what, did, what do we call that in Texas? Hospitality. Hospitality. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hospitality. It never go wrong being hospitable to people. Amen? And so, uh, look, at, look at his reaction. What does he do? Bow. He, Bow. he bowed down and worshiped God. This man is wild, and I'm going to worship the Lord again because he had just wowed me. Okay? And so uh, he, he, and he blessed, it says, he blessed the God, Lord God of his master Abraham, who had not left destitute my master of his mercy. He still got Abraham on his mind because of his oath. And he said, now look at this. Look, at, he says, I being in the way. Notice that? How many of y'all noticed that when you read it the first time? That's what he said. What, what is the way he's in? Ah. He's in the will of God and he knows it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Did you know before the, the people of the church, the, the New Testament church were called Christians, did you know what they were called? In the way. People of the way. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? That's what they were called. They were first called Christians in Antioch. Mm -hmm. And until that time, they were called people of the way. Why? Because Jesus is the way. No, no he's the only way. And that's what they were called. And this man says, he gives us a hint into, into the future. I being in the way, look, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brother. So I'm in the way. I'm in God's will. I'm where he wants me to be. He has led me here. He has shown me this great, y'all might not think this is a big deal. This is a miracle, a great miracle that he's shown this man. i got to move on. Okay, and so now he's going to be introduced to the family. Somebody read for me uh, verses 29 through 31, please. And Rebecca had a brother, and his name was Levan. Laban. Laban. 
and Laban ran out into the, unto the man, unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hand, and when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. <clears throat> and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. So Rebecca had a brother, his name was Laban, and Laban now comes running out. He has seen the, the, the gold that his sister has, and he wants to meet this guy. He said, I'm, I'm, come on in. <laughs> you think he saw dollar signs? I don't know. I think the angel of the Lord who went ahead and that whole family mm -hmm. was prepared is what I think. <laughs> and now the hospitality. Y'all, we're not going to read all of this stuff. I'm just going to, because now it goes back and, and it highlights and it goes back over what, what we've already talked about. But uh, he, he explains to Aaron the, the, uh, when he goes to the house and they gave him straw for the, and provender for the camels in verse 32 and they gave him water to wash his feet. Okay? That was a big deal. Right? And they gave him water to wash his feet and then we find out now that he's got other men with him because the Bible says that the men's feet that were with him. We just don't know how many but they took all of them in their house and then they set meat before him and he says, what does the servant say when they set the food in front of him? He said he wasn't going to eat until he told him why he was there. Okay, now this is in verse 33. He says, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, speak on. And so he began to tell him the story that he was Abraham's <laughs> servant and that uh, the Lord had blessed Abraham and how great and how much gold and silver and flocks and herds and servants, men servants, maid servants, camel, donkeys. And then he, he, he talked about Sarah, Abraham's wife. They knew uh, who, that Sarah and Abraham were husband and wife because they were husband and wife when they left Mesopotamia to begin with. And, and so he, they knew this man. He wanted them to know before he popped this question to them that he was who he said he was. He represented his master and he wanted them to know how much he knew about his master so they would know that it was really him and, and so he says uh, he said and Sarah my master's wife verse 36 by a son of my master when she was old and to him hath he given all that he has so he was wanting him, them to know before he ever told them what he was wanting that Isaac the young man the 37 to 40 however old he was at this time Everything was his now, was going to be his. He's going to be a rich man, okay? He wanted him to know that. And so he, then he tells him the mission. He tells him the mission. Uh, uh, verse 37, uh, and it goes on several verses after that. He tells him the story of how Abraham had, had, uh, had, had sent him to the house of his kindred uh, to, to find a wife. He tells them the providence of God and the answer to his prayer in verse 42. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou uh, do prosper uh, my, my way which I go. And he, and he went to tell that whole story that we've already read about how he prayed and then Rebecca shows up. He tells them every bit of that. And so this is, this is really a wow moment. Verse 45, it repeats, And before I had done speaking in mine heart, behold, Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. And she did everything that I prayed and asked the Lord to show me. And so then it says, uh, uh, then it tells when Rebecca left to go prepare everything and to tell the family that this man was there and to make provision for him. Verse 48 it says that when she left, he bowed down his head and he worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And so now that this is the moment of truth. This is now, I've told you my whole story. 
Uh, now, <laughs> what's the question now? Would can she go? Yeah. Can can she go? Because see, this, this guy, all this stuff is working out, and yet he every time he comes to these moments, it's up to another individual to say yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know where y'all know this or not, but when Abraham declared, I'm going to send the angel, I'm going to ask the Lord to send his angel ahead of you, that's what the angel of the Lord does, is prepare people for you to find favor with. Have you ever seen such an outpouring of hospitality to a stranger? You won't find it no greater than anywhere else in the Bible. Why? Because God arranged it. He prepared their, only God can do that. Don't ever be afraid to go witness and knock on the door for Jesus Christ. And before you ever go, don't you go on your own. You ask the Lord and you ask Him to prepare that household for your witness. Are you listening to me? And He will. He'll prepare that household for your witness. And they'll be receptive to you when you go there. That's what we see here in the scripture. You know, in uh, Abraham come from family that was worshiping idols, right? They were right, idolaters. But, but idolatry. But thirty-one, the brother says, "You're blessed by the Lord." So he. Yeah. Well, he, he, Abraham been gone hundred. I mean, he's been gone hundred years. Yeah. Maybe they've come to the Lord now. And maybe they had idols besides the Lord. And a lot of them did do that. Yeah, or, or they angels prepared the right person, you know. But That's right. But the thing about it is, this man has talked about no idol. He's only talked about the Lord that's God right. of Abraham. That's all he even he didn't referred to nothing but the Lord God of his master Abraham. And so they know this man is representing this God, Yahweh God. They know that. And so they, they didn't know about God. God spoke to Abraham while he was there. And took him away from that family, so they're they're aware that there's a God, and and so by, hopefully by this time, and I understand your point, but hopefully by this time they've done away with the idols, and they're gonna worship this God too. But well, yeah. Abraham's made a pretty big. He's done what a few kings and yeah. conquered a few. <laughs> he got a big reputation. He probably got a name. But on I the also think too. that's a good point. It's one of the reasons Abraham didn't want Isaac going back there. That's right. So. Because I'm afraid he, he was afraid he'd be influenced by their idolatry too. So it, it's a good, very good point to bring out. And so that's why he had made arrangements. Brother Gary, on verse 47, when he asked her, Whose daughter are you? And she told him, It says, So I put the nose ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist. What was the purpose of the nose ring? It was just something, uh, an adornment that they wore at that time. You know, you see a lot of the statues of the women, they had nose rings in their ear, uh, nose, and they had, uh, you know, it was just a, it was just a, uh, something of that day. Yeah. It's coming back. Yeah, it's coming back. <laughs> anyway, and now uh, you got, it wasn't a pierce. It was a slip, okay? They didn't, they didn't, I, I assumed it was because it didn't say that he pierced her nose. It just said he put it on her face. Okay. And so, uh, and so now he poses this question. Now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Verse 49. He said, tell me whether you're going to do this or not. I've got to know because if not, i got to do something different. Now, what do you think he, he would have done? He knew Abraham had more family than this. I'm going to go find somebody else. Because that's why they do that genealogy in 22. It tells a lot of different uh, family members. So he's going to go look somewhere else. What he's got. I'm not, i got to know what i got to do. And so now he gets another wild moment. And uh, we're going to do these next uh, 50 through 53, and then we're going to close for tonight. Uh, somebody read that for me, please. Verses 50 through 53. I'll read them and Methuel answered and said the thing comes from the Lord we cannot speak to you either bad or good here is Rebecca before you take her and go and let her be your master's son's wife as the Lord has spoken and it came to pass when Abraham's servant heard their words 
that he worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Then the servant brought out jewelry of silver, jewelry of gold, and clothing, and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. Her okay, brother. so when, when uh, he, uh, uh, Laban and, and, and Bethuel, who is uh, of the father, uh, answered and said, if this is from God, what are we? Who are we to stand in, in the way? So they, evidently they believed in God, yeah. and they knew that they couldn't thwart His plan. They, they, it seemed like they understood that, yeah. and so he, he he said, "We we cannot speak unto thee, bad or good." He said, and then he did. They did something that is very uncharacteristic for this time. What was it? They looked at Rebecca. Well, he said, and Rebecca, she is before thee. They didn't ask her, did they? Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. Now, don't you wish it was that easy today? No. <laughs> and he said, no, I don't want to, I don't want it to be that easy today. Then you'd be married to some of them brighter cousins of yours. <laughs> that ain't right. <laughs> yeah, we all had girl cousins. It's not very many girl cousins. <laughs> now, when Abraham heard this, what does he do? He cries and he He falls son. down again and he worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. I'm, I'm sorry, the servant. The servant. He. This is one worshiping dude right now. God has wowed him so much that he can't help but worship and worship and worship and be thankful and thankful and thankful. He went because he has seen God at work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Y'all want me to do testimony service for Brown Hill Sunday night? He's been right in the big middle of it all the way. All the way. And, you know, all the way there. He's there all this worrying that he's figured out now. All this worrying I did was for nothing. All this bartering I did with Abraham was for nothing. God's got this and look at him work. Can't, nobody but God could have done it. He's wild. He's probably worried that it was going to be a really difficult task. And it laid in his lap. That big man. I don't know where I'm at. My camels are thirsty. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It was probably all that going through his head. It was all going through his head. And the servant brought forth the jewels of silver and the jewels of gold and raiment. Now we know why he had the camels. He wasn't trading camels for Rebecca. He was trading the stuff the camels were carrying for. Uh, and not only that, he didn't only he didn't give it all to them. He gave it most of it to her. <laughs> Look at it. And so it says, it, and he brought forth the jewels, silver and gold, and raiment, and gave them to Rebecca. He gave her all this stuff for a dowry, and then he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. So the debt's paid. The stage is set. Now all you got to do is get her back there. And that's where we're going to leave it tonight. Any, any questions or comments? Yes, because I, I looked back and I was trying to figure out. He he did know that she he was, he did know because Abraham told him he wanted to go back to his people and do that. That was explained on verse one of that chapter. And so, and evidently he knew uh, Nahor was the brother of Abraham, and so when she mentioned those names, he knew that uh, that she was he was with his family, and which. Uh, Nahor is the father of Bethuel, and Bethuel is the father of Rebecca. Okay, Laban is her brother, so she was Rebecca. Great niece. Pardon? So she was Abraham's great niece. She's Abraham's great niece, which would make her Isaac's what we call our second cousins yeah. today. It's, it's who she was to in relation to the, that family. But then, okay. And she's willing to go, yes, sir. You know, thinking about this, uh, Rebecca being as special as she was and being able to do all that, 
and doing the will of the Lord and getting all that water, I think it would have been a good place to inject a little verse that says, and God prepared a woman just as he did the well for God. Amen. This woman was super special. I guarantee you she was. And, and it just rhymed, it could resonate through my head. God prepared her for that. Yeah, and you know. It wasn't just a normal everyday person, I don't think. When we read this, we don't get, we don't realize just exactly what she was willing to do right. by herself. That was a great monumental feat that she did without being a slave. She wasn't a slave. She was a, I mean, it, it was just, it, it was something only God could do. Gave her the energy to do it. And, and this guy sitting there watching her, he just holding his piece and oh my God, look at her. And he paid her before he ever found out she was. Mm -hmm. So she already had made a great impression on this servant before he even knew who she was. And uh, you know, young people, y'all listen to me. It pays to make impressions on adults sometimes. She may have been praying for something for herself. She may have been. We don't know. Yeah, she they may don't have been say. For something and it always fell in the line for her. But I think in the next few verses where we stop, it's going to show us that she's excited about leaving and having a husband. She wants to be married. Because in that day, that's what women really wanted. They wanted husbands and they wanted to have children. That's what they're. Her goal in life was. And, uh, well, God prepared everybody in this whole scenario. Absolutely. He, I mean, that angel of the Lord that was sent ahead, he had everything. Yeah. Hey, the table was spread. All you got to do is eat. And that's what this servant is eating. And every time he saw something, he worshiped. I love that about this servant. Every time something changed and the Lord gave him what he was looking for, he worshiped God. But we need to always remember that. He, you know, you can worship without being here. That's right. When the Lord answers a prayer for you at home, worship. Boy, what, what a greater testimony for, for a dad or a mom for, than for their children to witness them worship God in their home because he's answered their prayers. Well, that was your sermon Sunday about praising God. Yeah. It's, it's My our, mother and I, we've been sowing that every little thing we'll be talking about. I said, well, Mom, you praise God? Amen. Amen. All right. I sure do love y'all. Thank y'all for braving the weather tonight, not knowing we we're gonna have storms and tornadoes. And look at that little smiley, arrogant face right there. I'm telling you what. And thank y'all for all being here to, tonight. And I hope you young people learn something about marriage. <laughs> Let mom and dad pick them for you. That's good. That'll work every time. Pick and, yeah, my, and you know, the more you pay them, the prettier they get. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stay and be dismissed. <clears throat> Brother Staten, would you dismiss us, please? Lord, we come forward with our many blemishes. Lord, we know that you can see our hearts and our minds and know that we love you. Lord, we just ask that you give us from sin. We've got so many folks that are sick, ill, going through so much treatment. Lord, we ask that you touch the doctor. We ask that you be with their families and you bless them. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you for your message here and your word. Lord, help us to go out and share it with those out there that don't know you. Lord, we ask that you be with us this week. As he saints in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you.